Hi, everybody. This is Steve Washer with Visible Authority, and I'm very glad that you're joining us today. I'm really excited uh, to have a special guest with us today. Hi, Ian. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about Ian Brody. Uh, he's one of my favorite people in, in the whole online universe. And the reason we're talking today, we talk quite frankly, but the reason that we're sharing this with you today is that Ian has recently, say within the last six months or so, uh, taken up using video on a very regular and fairly frequent basis, something that I encourage people to do a lot for a number of reasons. Um, but he has a, a really interesting way of doing this. He's got an interesting take uh, on his strategy and on his workflow. And I know you're going to love hearing about this. But, but first of all, for those of you who don't know Ian, uh, Ian helps consultants and coaches and other professionals uh, to attract and win more clients. He's the author of the Amazon number one bestseller book, uh, Email Persuasion, which teaches business owners and professionals how to captivate and engage their audiences, build authority, and get more sales with email marketing. He's also been named as one of the top 50 global thought leaders in marketing and sales by Top World Magazine. And his website was named as one of the resources of the decade for professional services marketing by RainToday.com. Welcome, Ian Brody. Hey, it's good to be here. Really glad. I'm really glad to have you with us today. And um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about how you're using video now. You're using it, I think, in a very interesting way. And um, but before we get into the like the nuts and bolts of mm -hmm. how you're using video. I'd like to talk first for just a little bit, ask you to tell us a little bit about why you started using video. Um, well, I guess probably like many decisions, certainly my decisions, there were lots of factors that came into play. It wasn't just one thing. Um, I'd done little bits of video um, for quite a long time. Um, but as you said, uh, probably the last six, seven months or so, I've been doing video much more frequently. Um, and the reason I did that was, I, I, as I say, I've been using video every now and then. I was getting good feedback on the video I was doing. I've always communicated regularly with my audience, but I wanted a way of really connecting um, and really, well, it really it is about making that personal connection, I think. So, you know, you can, I'm, I, as you probably guessed, because I've written a book on email marketing, I email quite a lot. I try and build relationships with people through email marketing. Um, through regularly communicating with them, trying to stay top of mind, trying to add value to them and be useful while sharing personal stuff and, and, and building that personal relationship. But I guess at the end of the day, one of the reasons I wanted to add video into the mix was that um, video is, I guess, more transparent in the sense that, in theory, uh, behind a blog post or behind an email, somebody else could be writing that other than me, I guess. Um, now, I'm, hopefully you hear my voice in my emails and my blog posts, but certainly when I'm on video, it, it's got to be me. You'd be very, be very easily be able to tell if someone had written a script and I was just reading it. So I think it does help to build that personal connection. It feels a little bit like you're face to face with someone build, building a, um, a relationship like you would if you knew them personally. Um, and it adds to the mix as well. I think the more different channels you're communicating with people with, um, the richer the relationship building becomes. So really there was that big thought of, I want to build deeper relationships with people and I think um, video can really help me with that. The second element was w of it was, of course, that there are lots of gadgets and toys involved in video, and I love playing with gadgets and toys. So that <laughs> I must admit that that influenced my decision as well. Boys and their toys, what can I yeah. say? I'm the same way. <laughs> I know a lot of our audiences as well. Um, so, so you've only been using video for maybe uh, six months or so now. What, have, what do you feel is so far... Um, the, the 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 most tangible result that you can you know assess from it well obviously i think it's too early to see any major changes in you know in sales in my business or anything like that because obviously there are a lot of other things going on at the same time but since i started becoming much more frequent you know i always did the occasional video in the past but i've now been doing you know a five minute video every tuesday morning going out to my email subscribers and on my blog every week for um, over six months and since I've started doing that, the feedback I've been getting from people, even to my other emails, qualitatively, it seems to have changed. Um, it seems to be a bit more personal. Um, it's like people 
like me more. I, I don't know whether that's the, the right the right phrase, but instead of just, hey, that was a really great, you know, really great email, Ian, I really agree with you, you know, great point, I get, that was a really great point, Ian. And by the way, I really love the work you're doing. Um, so many people are just sending out stuff, blah, 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 but you're the person I really listen to. You seem to be very honest. And, and I think the, the honesty coming through, and I think that work, that works for me because... Um, you know, there are lots of people write emails and do blog posts and communicate with people. And one of the things I try to be is is fairly frank in terms of, uh, like many people, I base my tips and my ideas and recommendations on my own experiences and what my clients have experienced. And I'm very honest about, you know, it, it hasn't happened overnight for me. I've not become a millionaire in, in a weekend sort of thing. I haven't had a, a product launch that you know, I pressed a button and I was rich. So I'm so disappointed to hear that. Oh, I oh. know it's amazing. So it has been, rel- you know, it's been hard work. And I think for most people, um, succeeding in business is hard work. You have to stick at it and you have to work really hard. Um, and and because I'm sending out a message that is kind of truthful uh, and honest like that, the ability to share that on video where people can kind of see it in your eyes that you're not, you know, trying to trying to BS them. You're not trying to say everything is rosy and wonderful, and all you have to do is wish for something and it'll happen, or or all you have to do is press this button, buy this software, and all of a sudden everything will be great. I think that comes across well on video. They kind of connect with you. And we can't discount the consistency factor. I mean, the fact that you're doing something every week does mean something. You know, just beyond the quality of the content itself. When people come to expect to hear from you and then they don't hear from you, if you're delivering, you know, quality stuff to them, they're going to miss you when you're gone. Mm -hmm. And that's not something you want to have happen, but um, but definitely it is a factor. And I think that people don't really understand the consistency factor all that well because that's not how we're trained. Mm. We're trained to do the, the press the easy button and make, you know, 42.56 gazillion dollars. And that, that, that isn't really how it works. What works is showing up, doing the it's work. Been like, it's been like compound interest, isn't it? The, uh, you, you know, compound, it's, it's, you know, it's a, it, you add a little bit every time, but a, a year later, all of a sudden, woo, and two years later, woo, and it, it takes off. It was, was it Warren Buffett or, no, it was Einstein who said, you know, com, the compound interest is the, the, the you know the, the most one, magical thing in the universe the eighth wonder of the world eighth I think. wonder of the world that's that's right and I think I was thinking about this this morning actually and I was kind of thinking of the entertainment world and if you think of the biggest stars in the entertainment world if you think on TV who are the biggest stars they're people like Oprah they're the Lenos the Lettermans the people who show up every week not not just the people who make one show and it was really good and then you never hear from them again in fact you know what that the really good comparison here I, I thought about this a while back. Um, is the, the world of Sherlock Holmes. I, My wife is a huge Sherlock Holmes fan, and as you probably know, there are currently two TV shows, um, both showing, uh, both about Sherlock Holmes, both set in a modern era. There's um, Elementary, um, with the set in New York, and there's Sherlock set in, set in London, and they both started about the same time. And initially, my wife and I kind of preferred Sherlock, Probably mm-hmm. because it was British, of course, and made by the BBC. We have to, out of, out of patriotism. And we like that. But Sherlock has had, I think, three series with about four episodes every series. Um, Elementary has had about, I think it's in its third series, but it does about 20, 30 episodes every series. And you know what? I feel closer. I must admit, I feel a lot closer to Johnny Lee Miller's Sherlock and Lucy Lou's Watson than I do to Benedict Cumberbatch's Holmes. Um, just, and I think it's through frequency. I just they're in my house every week with right. every episode. There's something about that frequency that allows people to get to know you on a deeper and deeper level. I saw something as long as we're talking about television. I saw something the other day about uh, a retrospective on um, some of the old sitcoms, and one of them was Cheers. Now Cheers is everybody knows where everybody knows your name, right? Yeah. And that show was on the air for 11 years, and when they first started their ratings were terrible and they almost got pulled but the network decided to stay with them just a little bit longer and they caught on and people started you know figuring out who they were and then after a while it was appointment tv and you had to tune in mm, to see what to there. sam and diane were going to do and and so this is the idea of the of, of consistency mm. that people get to know you and then when you're gone 
and say you go away for like with with Sherlock they go away for eight months or nine months at a time and then they come back four times and maybe it's on a different network at a different time the the consistency factor is completely lost you yes, know, you don't you just do don't them. build that relationship that you that you oh. do Yes, you don't build a relationship. In fact, it's the thing that I, 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 angers me now. The uh, is uh, American TV having mid-season breaks. We don't have them in the UK, but now we have a lot more U, um, US TV coming over. We've, we have to have your... And, and, and we don't have it six months later now. We have it like one, one week later. We have your mid-season breaks now, and I'm tuning in going, where's my show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is a little infuriating, but that has to do with, you know, the internet kind of taking over the entertainment world, too. They don't have the budgets that they used to have uh-huh. for network television. Um, but anyway, we a little bit off the track here, but it, it, it does apply. Um, so so let's talk a little bit about, about your strategic use of video. Again, before we get into the nuts and bolts, which is the next thing we're going to talk about, uh-huh. but just from a 30,000-foot level... What are the ways in which you are actually using video? Okay. The primary ways. Primary. I think there are three. So I've always, when I've been doing something important from a sales perspective, I've always tried to use video because I know in my world, um, when I'm teaching marketing advice to consultants, coaches, people like that, there's always a degree of skepticism. Um, there's always a lot of get rich quick schemes, etc. And I think people, my people, want to see. I think want to want to know that they can trust the person behind the advice they're getting. So I've always tried to use video there, and that will mean, um, for example, if I'm doing a webinar that I'm inviting people to, and then I'm sharing some content and then offering them a program at the end. And when they sign up for the webinar, I'll do a kind of quick welcome, thanks for signing up video. I'll maybe do a, a video. Uh, before they go on the webinar, maybe to help um, clarify a few things, get a few of the basics out of the way so that we don't have to cover them on the webinar. And then I'll probably answer a few questions that I didn't manage to cover on the webinar in follow-up videos. Um, So I've always done that kind of video. What I've been increasingly doing now is for my membership program that people pay a monthly fee for and they get access to all my kind of material on on, uh, marketing and sales, is in addition to the typical um slide video slideshow videos with training stuff on i'll always introduce them now um with me just talking to camera sometimes i'll do the entire video with me talking to camera and again i think that helps you know there's an element the purely rational thing about slideshow videos training videos is hey the material's there people can learn from it doesn't really matter but i think you have to give people a bit of confidence that you know what you're talking about for them to be willing to try it um, because if they don't try it, if they watch a video and they think, oh, no, maybe I won't. But if they see you face to face talking about it and your experiences with it, then they'll try it and then they'll get results from it. But the big thing I've done, as we said, is in the last six, seven months, I've started doing a once a week, five minute marketing tip video to my wider subscriber base. So I've always um, obviously emailed my subscriber base um, two or three times a week. Now what I'm doing is on a Tuesday morning, I'm sending out a link to a video and that's helping me to, to build the relationship with them. That's great. So so let's talk a little bit about um, about how you actually get that done because that is a, that's a bit of work. You gotta do it every week. Um, gosh, doesn't it take you days and days to, to put out a video? That's what everyone tells me. I can't spend four days making a video. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about your process. Okay, so yeah, and, I, and to be honest, um, it just doesn't it doesn't take as long as as I'd thought. And when you're doing it frequently, you just get faster and faster. I think so. What I do is first thing is obviously coming up with the ideas for the content. So I usually st- my brain starts whirring on a Friday. I think where I, I begin to think, you know, what am I going to talk about on my video when I record it on Monday, ready for the Tuesday sending out? Um, and I don't think too hard. I kind of think, well, what would be good? Is there anything in my own life, my own business, something's happened to clients, something interesting in the news? Is it just some some topic I might want to cover? Um, and what then happens, like all the kind of creative stuff, I, I go to sleep, I'm in the shower or whatever, and something will strike me over the weekend. And if not, I just have to, on a Monday morning, I just have to sit down and brainstorm and think through, come on, what am I going to cover this week? Sometimes I make it easy for myself by doing picking a topic and doing two or three videos in a row on the same topic. So that kind of makes it easier because I'm kind of narrowed down to one particular topic. So I come up with the idea. Then typically what I'll do is I'll get a, an index card. So I keep a little pack of index cards on my desk and I'll just write down in a big marker pen a couple of points that I want to cover. 
Um, usually I never need to refer to them because the act of writing them down is, uh, enables me to, to remember them. But I have those and I kind of pin them underneath the camera. And then um, mentally, on the Monday, just as I'm driving or something like that, I'll mentally rehearse my introduction to the video. And uh, usually it'll be something along the lines of, you know, hi, Tina, here. Welcome to another five minute marketing tip video. On this week, I'm going to cover the vital topic of X, Y, and Z. And I'll say something about why it's important. Um, the video then typically cuts to a clip of my logo whizzing on the screen for a couple of seconds. And then I come back and say, hi, welcome back. Um, today's video is about this. It's important because of that. Or the main thing is this or whatever. And I'll just go through and talk to camera um, getting my point across. That will bit won't be scripted. Um, it will just be me talking over the bullet points I've made. Um, you know, occasionally I might go um and ah, just like I am now. Um, you know, it's not word perfect, but I don't think people ex expect that. It's like I'm sitting down with them over a coffee and explaining, uh, you know, answering a question that they've asked me. So I record that. Um, I record that on a DSLR camera. I used to do it just on a webcam, the same one we're kind of using now, um, Logitech C920. Um, but I now do it on a DSLR camera because it's got a fancy lens that has the blurry background that I quite like. You absolutely don't need that. Now my first my first few were not weren't on that. Um, but I just download it from the camera, put it in the computer, load it into ScreenFlow because I'm a Mac user. It would be Camtasia should I be a PC user. Um, on the camera, I have a microphone that plugs into the camera. Um, I have a little Lavalier mic that you know sits here. Um, it's a wired one, and that that that's enough. The sound sounds sounds good. Um, I put it into screen flow and then all I do then initially is I top and tail it to cut off the you know the, the bit where I'm pressing the button on the camera or whatever um, and I um, remove the background noise I'd use a 20% setting is enough to get rid of the background noise without clipping it too much and then I immediately export the audio and the reason I do that is I upload it to rev.com and rev.com is an online transcription service one dollar a minute so for my five minute videos, it's usually five, six dollars. And I find the turnaround time on that is about two hours. So I, I, that's why I quickly upload it to them before I do any editing. So it just I, I can usually get it back the same evening and upload the blog post to the web. I then edit the video. And, you know, it doesn't take all that long because all I'm doing is cutting it and inserting my a little um, logo animation that I got from Fiverr. Um, and then just adding a text overlay with my name on when I say hi, it's Ian, for people who don't know me. And then occasionally, if I'm doing a video where I'm making some points, like I'm saying, you know, point one, point two, point three, I might put the text of those points on the screen just so people can write them down or, or remember them because, I, you know, if I've moved on from them. And that's about it. Then I just export it, upload it to YouTube or um, and Wistia at the same time, um, and then get it on my website. That's 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 fab. So you're talking about maybe a couple of hours and maybe an hour waiting for the the transcription to come back from Rev.com, and then you do something kind of interesting with Wistia and YouTube together. Yeah, it's maybe a little bit technical, but I love playing around with stuff like that. Um, I um, have a little tool on my website. A lot of people have it called Thrive Leads, which is a little plugin that does pop-up boxes, opt-in forms, all that kind of stuff. Um, and wh when that came out, it has a really nice feature that, like a lot of these tools, um, once you fill in the form in the tool to subscribe to, to someone's emails, it doesn't show the, the pop-up or doesn't show the form anymore. Um, in fact, Thrive's pretty advanced. It lets you show something else, like a, like a banner to sell your next level product. Um, but uh, Thrive is even more advanced because it it lets you do that for existing subscribers as well. You put a little um, bit, bit of bit of script, a bit of, on the link from all your emails that go to your website, and it basically tells Thrive, "Hey, this is an existing subscriber." It kind of cookies them on your website, so it knows don't show this person opt-in boxes because they're they're already opted in. Don't waste their time. So I, I looked at that and I thought, you know what, um, I. On when I do my videos, I like to I like to try and use the videos to get people to subscribe. So on Wistia, they have this turnstile function where you can say, you know, after 30 seconds, pause the video, put a little box up saying, you know, put your email address in to subscribe for regular updates or press skip to continue on. And again, I thought, you know what, for existing subscribers, that's a bit annoying. Um, given that most people looking at the video will be existing subscribers, I do want to get new subscribers, but I don't really want to annoy my existing subscribers. 
So I emailed the Thrive folks and said, you know, this technology you're using to stop your pop-up boxes and all that kind of stuff, um, can I use that as well for my own stuff? And they said, sure, you just have to check this cookie um, that, that will show it's unique on your own website. So my cookie will be different to your cookie or whatever. So they told me how to find out what it was. And then I just put a little bit of code on my website that basically says, if they're a subscriber already, then show them a YouTube video with obviously no opt-in box. But if they're brand new, they've come from social media or whatever, then show them the Wistia video with an opt-in box after 30 seconds or whatever. And that's all set up in, in, in Wistia. That is just so, I mean, that's such a great use of technology. That's how we should be using technology. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I kind of think of it, it's kind of like a usability thing. I mean, what? that's one of the things that, you know, I, I like to try and break paradoxes in a way because, uh, you know, the paradox of, of opt-in boxes and pop-ups and stuff like that is they really work, but they annoy your existing subscribers if they keep popping up. So what are you going to do? Well, this helps you break out of that because you just don't show them to your existing subscribers. All right. That's great. Okay, so that's your workflow, and primarily it is a way of just helping you get your ideas out without having to script them out, and then you can speak for a few minutes at a time before you feel like you know you would need a teleprompter or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. I think about five minutes. I can seem to go for about five minutes. Mm -hmm. Some people can't do that, though. Uh, they can maybe go for 15 seconds, 20 seconds before they feel like they would need something else. They probably can do better than that. I suspect it's, they could. It is a matter of practice. It's always a matter of practice. Um, mm. It's just, a, I just, I like your, um, I like your philosophy of how you do this. The idea of, I'm sitting across from you, we're having some coffee, let's talk about your problems. Um, so let's, so let me just transition from that for a second. And uh, what would you, and ask you what you would say to someone who has been thinking about using video, knows the value in using video, but hasn't quite started yet. What would you say to them? Well, uh, in a way, it's a bit of a just do it thing. But I think what, what helped me was deciding to do it weekly. Um, because previously I've been doing video. There are two things I think that helped me. One was making it easy for myself. So I, when I used to do videos, I used to record them in my garage, which was downstairs. I'd have to pull the cars out of the garage. I'd have to put a screen up, set, you know, pull the lights out of their storage, set the lights up and all that. So it would take me half an hour or so just to get set up. Uh, mm -hmm. And of course, that if you're recording a five minute video, that feels like an awful lot of work. And then, of course, break it down again and put it away. So the first step that made it easier was just uh, essentially tidying the office up so I da now, I'm now not embarrassed to have the video showing behind me because we painted the wall. It it's now no longer looks like the kids' playroom when it used to be when they were younger. It actually looks like my office. Um, so th And uh, just having the video equipment permanently set up as well. So I have my camera there all the time. Um, I have my lights in position and all I do is switch them on. Um, I have some little tape on the floor that marks where the chair goes to get me in the right the right distance um a little a little tip I, I didn't think of for ages i think you have a name for it i forget what it's called but um i was always fiddling around trying to um, put my hand up and focus the camera and then i figured i could just get this on the end of a stand a little picture of me to we focus on her, stuff uh, like we that. call her iris the bag lady iris the bag lady so just little tips like that um mechanically makes it easier and quicker to do um but I think the thing that really broke it for me, that made it happen, was saying, you know, I really want to do this and I'm going to commit to doing it weekly. So I, I called them, started calling them five minute marketing tips, my weekly five minute marketing tip. I kind of committed to the world I'd be doing it. Um, and that just kind of forced me to it, 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 it made me better at my content, I think, because I'm forced to come up with a new idea every week. Um, I'm forced to sit down every week and be systematic about it. Whereas when I was when I was just doing an occasional video, um, it was very easy to put it to one side. Oh, I'm busy this week. Oh, I've got an important client project on. Oh, I need to make some more content for the membership site. It was all too easy to do that. Now I know, you know, the only time I've missed the video, I think, was uh, when I was on holiday. Basically, <laughs> I was in I was in Jamaica, so it was rather difficult for me. Um, but I actually managed to record one in advance, so um, I may not actually have missed it. I think I've missed once when I've been on holiday. That's it. Mm. Um, and the rest of the time, I've stuck to that rigidly, um, and it, and that's forced me just to to speed things up, to get more comfortable doing it, um, and and that's worked. So I would say to people, 
you don't need all the fancy equipment. I started off with a little webcam. Um, that was fine. Uh, and set yourself a kind of you know, target. I will do this number of videos this frequently. And that kind of forces you to do it. Today, these webcams are really pretty good. Yeah, I'm kind of amazed by the. If it wasn't for the fact that I really like the blurry background, um, then uh, then I would be still using a webcam today because it worked absolutely fine for me. And I did, I did my first ones. I was actually on, I had the webcam going, and I would stand and write on a flip chart behind me, and that worked great as well. I think that again, it just felt like a bit of a, a, a tutorial. It's excellent. So Ian, where can people see your videos and learn more about you? Okay, so um, if you just come to my website at www.ianbrody.com, you'll see that um, the videos are quite prominent. They're just there on the blog, on the home page. Um, they're called Five Minute Marketing Tips. My YouTube, YouTube channel, is, channel is More Clients TV. I'm going to be honest here. My YouTube channel is not the best channel. I haven't got a fancy front page and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think most people visit the site and see the see the videos there. I probably need to work on the channel. Well, it depends on your market. I mean, some some of my clients wouldn't be caught dead on YouTube. Um, you know, it just it just depends if they're going after corporates and, mm. uh, and very highly placed, image sensitive markets. They they may not want to have anything to, to do with YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. YouTube. So in my case, the, the you know they're on YouTube, but most people come and watch them on my site. So if you just come to the website, you can just uh, watch one. You can sign up, and you'll get notification of the uh, of all the future ones. Great. Well, I encourage you guys go check out Ian's. Um, uh, Ian's website, at least, if not his YouTube channel. Um, well, I guess that's uh, that's all the questions I have. Is there anything else that you want to add that I haven't asked you about? Um, I think that just about covers it. I think, you know, it's worth... It does get easier. It does get easier. So I think we were bouncing ideas around before before we came on live, and I think I worked out that it really it's only about an hour a week I'm spending on the of actual my time on the video in terms of, you know, it'll take five or so minutes to record, maybe another minute or so as I wait for it to come into the computer. The editing is really quite simple because I'm just copying, pasting the settings I had from the previous one. I have to wait for five, ten minutes for it to export. I then have a bit of a gap where I go off and do something else as the transcript is coming. I have to um, update the little um, the, the thumbnail image of the video. That takes a couple of minutes. And then actually creating the blog post Pasting the content into the blog post takes a few minutes, but all in total, you know, to in total, it's probably less than an hour um, of my actual time doing it, and it has a big impact. You know, I've had you know great feedback, as as we said earlier, where people have just feels like people are feeling that bit closer to me. So I think it's really well worth doing. Absolutely, it's worth doing. Well, Ian, thanks so much uh, for coming on uh, to the One Minute Authority. Let me see if I can uh, summarize this in one minute. Uh, consistency in doing your video is really important. Get yourself um, a nice clean space uh, where you don't have to set things up and tear them down uh, every five minutes when you want to do a video. Uh, create a process that doesn't take a tremendous amount of your time. Practice, practice, practice so that you can uh, speak without a script and without a teleprompter uh, when the mood strikes you. Maybe even try to, you know, get a couple of ahead uh, so you can give yourself a little break. But if you can't do that, don't spend a huge amount of time doing this. Focus on the client, on something that will be of tremendous value to them. Most of all, create a process for creating the videos so that you're not reinventing the wheel every time you do it. And, um, and, and have a kind of a, a little... A, a, a thumbnail, a, a, a similar kind of thumbnail that you use every time uh, to get the video up every time and then, um, you know, stir, shake, repeat. Yeah, it's that repeatability, I think, that the, the makes it work because it, apart from the individual video itself, everything's copy and paste from the previous ones, really. Mm, sounds great. Well, Ian, thanks again. And uh, perhaps we'll have you on a, a future episode of the One Minute Authority. And thanks, everyone, for joining us today, and we'll see you next time. See you next time.